Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meat Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. With me, of course, my co host, Donnie Hoover. Donnie. Yes. You know, we just can't seem to keep up with the weeks anymore. Oh, I know it. <laughs> it's getting further and further behind. It seems like the summertime and the warm weather you know, makes more on our plates. It's hard to keep up with everything. It does, but we will get you stuff as soon as we can. Yep. If we'll be on two weeks, somebody go send out a search party. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, on this episode of the Wrestle Horror Podcast, we have a returning guest for, let's see, which how many is this now, Maximus? four yeah. this is the fourth time yeah he's maximus bryant he is the president of the ohio hunters association no stranger to this show <laughs> good to see you again max good to see you both this i mean this this show is fantastic and and listening to like some of my previous episodes i always thought man it's just easy to talk on this show like you know, it, it's just a fun conversation to talk to the both of you. So I, I really appreciate you asking me back on. Oh, yeah, for sure. We appreciate it. I say you're the you're the uh, number one for the most visit, most guest appearances. <laughs> so you hold the top spot. <laughs> well, where's my badge on Facebook? <laughs> right. <laughs> where's my top fan badge? <laughs> there you go. I feel like it was taken away. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it's i mean it's great you know speaking with the with the both of you and you know and it and it's and it's kind of fun too to like listen back on the previous episodes to kind of be like what was i doing then and then what what am i doing now because like back um last time we spoke which was right after the last haunt season i wasn't president of the ohio haunters association so you know right. things have changed and you know things grow and uh it's it's kind of fun to keep doing the check-in yeah, for sure. And that's one of the things we wanted to talk about today. And uh, along with the upcoming haunt season, which you're privy to, obviously. But um, yeah, like I said before, you uh, last time you were here, you wasn't the president of Ohio, Ohio Haunters Association, and now you are. So uh, let's mm -hmm. talk a bit about that. We just had a, a recent meeting at Carnage Haunted House over the weekend and had a great time and a great turnout. So yeah, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the OHA. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we did just have a fantastic meeting. Carnage was such an amazing host. Mia and Andrew and Mike, um, they just, you know, they put so much together. We originally were actually going to be in that bar area. Mm -hmm. um, but then as soon as the number of people that responded went beyond 40 and into 70 and 80, and I think about 100 people showed up, mm -hmm. We, we couldn't fit in there anymore. So we actually ended up in the concourse and it was kind of funny to see them get all the tables out and everything, but it was a great meeting, great turnout. Uh, Terry did great speaking. Um, I got to talk a lot about what OHA has got coming up. Uh, and, and, you know, ever since, uh, you know, being the head of OHA, it's been fantastic to have, you know, Keith Newsom on the board with me, Ryan Gregor, Kelly Gregor, and uh, Nikki Spawn. They've just been amazing uh, people to work with, get feedback on. A lot of things have happened. Uh, so, you know, a big shout out to Jason Wilson and Katie, you know, for getting OHA going and everything. And, and, you know, I wish them the best and everything. I know that, um, you know, life gets complicated when you have kids and everything. And so mm -hmm. they, they, they know they're, they're, they're good at knowing when they have enough on their plate. I think that's a skill that I still need to learn. And <laughs> uh, so they, you know, they, they said, you know, it's, it's, you know, Max, we'd like you to, you know, take, take this forward. And I've got a great group of great board behind me. And uh, so yeah, there's just so much one can talk about with it and um, mm -hmm. and everything. So, yeah, so you definitely got a good group behind you. And if you ever figure out that uh, that secret to not having too much on your plate, let me know. <laughs> I I I, ooh, I think that the last word, uh, the homophone. It's not it's not no, but no. Right. <laughs> Being able to say it, and uh, I'm not I'm not good at that. I'm really not. Um, yeah, same, but. But I, I, I do know that it is necessary to come up and everything. So, uh, 
you know, and so ever since taking over, like Hell's Dungeon and Dayton hosted, they were phenomenal. They, you know, they got these the tables out and they put on the tablecloths and red runners across the tables. It looked really nice, uh, had amazing food. And then Mohican Haunted Schoolhouse two week, two months later, they were such amazing hosts using the gym as the meeting area. It's such a perfect meeting area. It was mm-hmm. just fantastic. Uh, and we've been able to sell shirts, stickers. We've had uh, people donating stuff for raffles. Uh, Scott Beaver uh, dropped off some uh, prosthetics and we were able to raffle those off and, and Keith made some masks. So, you know, the, the meetings have been productive and fun and we've had amazing speakers like Travis Bowling from American Horrorplex spoke at the first one. Um, Wells Township Haunted House, uh, they, they, they came over. Uh, Brittany came and spoke about connecting with your community at the second one. And then Terry Rook kind of uh, did a discussion slash train the trainer kind of talk at, at this most recent one at Carnage. So Hell's Dungeon, Mohican Odd Schoolhouse, Carnage. Thank you from me personally for uh, opening your doors to me and the Ohio Honk community and uh, being an amazing host. And so makes makes me look really look forward to a lot of the stuff that we have going on. Uh, like mm-hmm. out of nowhere, for example, we were asked to uh, come to Midwest Hunters Convention and have a booth. That was fun. We got to go to Chicago. We had a booth. I took several promotional items from a bunch of haunts. Like actually I actually have one from carnage sitting right here we had yeah. several things uh on the on our booth and 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 what we wanted to do was go into chicago and say hey all of you out here ohio we have amazing haunts and this is you know the things that we got going on in ohio it's awesome and we just wanted to brag about Ohio and Chicago land. And I think we had a lot of fun doing that. We, we had the booth, we had Ryan Greger talk about preserving your home haunt or protecting your investment with your home haunt. Uh, we, we also had a photographer, Lucretia come out and she set up in our meeting room and took photos. She took photos of so many actors and the room was actually pretty far away from the show floor, but we got all these people in costume to get over there and they got their photos taken. So it was actually, a uh, a lot of fun and uh, i think we added a lot of value to the show so we look forward to being a part of that yeah very cool a couple uh things you mentioned that i do want to touch on um the midwest honors convention at the meeting you gave out some information i don't know how much you're allowed to say at this time or or or, are privy to but you had mentioned about maybe a possibility of uh them sponsoring a possible uh convention or a meeting of sorts coming back to uh columbus or ohio yeah we uh so this has only been a couple of conversations Mm -hmm. and because when midwest hunters convention moved out of ohio you know that's when ohio hunter association got the ohhc event going Mm -hmm. and 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 there wasn't a lot of great communication between us and and the the midwest hunters convention folk and so Ever since COVID, we've had, I think, a better opportunity to communicate with each other and to say, like, look, you know, Ohio, we still want to do something. So, um, you know, we want to work with the other conventions. And, you know, we are a sponsor now of Midwest Honors Convention, and we're proud of that. And we want to continue to do that. And so maybe they, um, they've they indicated that it's possible that they would be able to sponsor an event that we would have. The only thing right now is we don't know what kind of event we want to have in Ohio. And that's why we brought it up at the meeting, you know, is this, mm-hmm. you know, like the Cleveland Haunt Club, they do like two different one day events, they do their flea market, and they do their garage sale. You know, would we want to hold an event like that that had more of an emphasis on education as well as a haunted house opening? Or uh, would we want to go more of that two day convention route? Uh, there, there, there's a lot of could be's. And I think what we as a board want to hear from the community is what do you want? First, you know, like what could, and, and we're going to be part of the planning committee with the Midwest. Uh, haunters convention going forward or you know we've been invited to be a part of that so we would like to know you know what are the barriers keeping ohio people from going to uh the midwest haunters convention yes there's the distance there's the drive so you know that being standing you know what what can the event do to become more attractive for ohio people to be a part of it because it really is a great event 
Like mm-hmm. there's actors uh, walking around in costume. You get to meet a bunch of people. This is how I got to know so many people in the haunt industry. I was at um, the last two that were in Columbus, right? And I walk around, I see a person with a haunt shirt. I don't know where that haunt is from. So I just walk up and I say, tell me about your haunt. And, you know, I met people that way and uh, I get to hear about them. And then I see them again at another convention. And, and this is a really a great way to network and, and make, uh, make the haunt family, you know, as far away as they would be, feel a little bit closer because you get to look forward to seeing people at different conventions. Um, and I think Midwest Haunts Convention is a great place for actors to go there. There's acting classes and, um, you know, a lot of stuff that people can work on with their costumes and uh, stuff there, uh, as opposed to a show like Trans World, which is more of a trade show. You know, you're buying, you know, thousands of dollars worth of stuff. You know, your typical actor isn't doing that. Uh, so I think Midwest is more geared towards that. There's all they're also more geared towards the home haunter, uh, you know, the, to you know, to come out. And that's why they created the whole home hunter education track, which we were a part of. So we, we'd like to do that, but you know, there's no reason why we can't have a party in Ohio as well. So right. there's nothing set in stone. There's nothing um, fully planned out. Like for example, venue, how many days it would be. So, you know, those who hear it from Ohio, get a hold of us you know, let us know what you want to see in Ohio, uh, because typically what it is, is people are coming up and saying, what's the Ohio Haunters Association doing? We're, 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 we're getting things rolling again, for sure. We just, mm. as far as an event goes, you got, you got to think, I think OHA started in like 2016 ish, 17. Yeah. And then very it, old. <laughs> right. And then, you know, two, three years later is when, they had their event. So we're kind of in a rebuild phase right now, uh, getting some culture uh, normalcy going with the, with the association and events. So um, we just, we're, we're, we're building that foundation so that when the time comes for the event to happen, whatever it is, or what kind of event it is, we want to be sure that there's plenty of support there and, 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 and an interest for it to be there. All right. Yeah. Well, my votes for a two day, event convention type type thing which i know that's you know that's a lot of work and you know more stuff on people's plate so but you know what no matter what it ends up being being at ohio is the the leading state for the most haunts in the country you know the other 49 states need to pick up the pace and get with it but uh i think we need to at least have something <laughs> you know what i've got to say is i am just thoroughly amazed at how quickly you have progressed max from the first time i met you when we met at quaker steak and lube because i had your uh gruesome giveaway present from big (laughs) scary show yeah oh i have it (laughs) i still got it (laughs) i still have it nice (laughs) you you were you were a home haunter you were a fan and you were just getting to ready you were just starting to work at dent Mm -hmm. and it see to to remember meeting you back then and to see you now is such a night and day difference you're just really you've brought a lot you've brought a lot of people together uh and you deserve to be the president of the oha i i really appreciate the those words Because, I mean, it it is kind of crazy how that all came to be. And, and, you know, you know, but like, for example, with the Big Scare show, it was listening to that show, realizing how big, not not necessarily how big the industry is, but like how it all kind of connects, like the rabbit hole or, or how deep it goes, you know, like the music the acting the, the the sets the all the different haunts the special events the different kind of haunts uh, you know big scary show kind of covered all of it and and at the time i was doing long drives all over the place so it was a great show to listen to and 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 i think it opened my eyes to what like all of the what all is there so it, you know the haunt industries turned into this big rabbit hole that i just dove dove down into and then once once i won the prize and I still, I love this thing. I really do. <laughs> it, it's fantastic. Um, 
you know, ever since then, I've just, you know, I continue to listen to different shows. I've gotten the pleasure of being on uh, several different shows as my involvement with things have continued to grow. And uh, so, you know, I, 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 I really appreciate it. you caused me in the moment to to kind of now think over the last several years about what all has happened. And so, you know, I, I really thank you both for your support and and encouragement. And 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 Jim, you know, I, I think I've messaged you and asked you several questions over the years uh, on different things. And you've always answered and had to, had the heart of a teacher. So I appreciate that greatly. I appreciate that. <laughs> I kind of like doing it. <laughs> yeah and and that's what we want to encourage with oha is you know uh trying to create an atmosphere of education you know people want to learn people want to do different things and and um so one thing you know donnie heard at the meeting we're trying to do is uh try to increase the uh home haunter um base because as a home haunter the the 2012 through 2015 i know nothing of the haunt industry like at all, not a thing. I'm a, I'm, I'm at that point what I've decided to call an off the grid haunter, like somebody who doesn't like, doesn't know how connected the industry can actually be. And I think home haunters still pretty much are tons of them are off the grid haunters. You have great groups like Cleveland Haunt Club, who um, I think uh, focuses pretty great on home haunters and brings them all together. The Chicago haunt builders also do that. Uh, so we're trying to do something similar for Ohio. And so we're giving a bunch of the members like a card that says like, Hey, great haunt display, join the Ohio Haunter association. The, the goal is for people to get that card. Yeah. Like Donnie has there. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the hope is they'll come onto the page and see that it's in that it's a group that you can share what you've been working on. I mean, like pro haunters, I think are less likely to share all their scenes because they want people to pay money to see their scenes, but home haunters, you know, they're doing all this without getting really anything back as far as uh, money wise goes. Mm-hmm. And we want them to share like what they're doing, you know, be proud of the work, you know, and, and, I, I love seeing haunt displays because home haunting is kind of where I came from originally in this whole thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I want more, more home haunters on the grid. So uh, Donnie, who has a card, he has mm-hmm. been instructed now when he's driving around and sees an amazing home haunt or display or, you know, uh, a, a, you know, one that just looks fantastic or whatever mm-hmm. subjective uh, criteria you want to use go drop the card off. And then, you know, hopefully that builds the base up and, and we can, you know, get to know more people, more friends, more engagement and uh, build a home haunter base. And um, that will help if we create an event in the future. So uh, that, that was one thing that we hope that happens this coming year is uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping that people like Donnie will, will say, yeah, yeah. I saw this amazing place, drop the card off. And now this person's on the group and they're sharing photos of their home haunt. Mm-hmm. perfect that's what i want yeah um, yeah when you brought that up i was going to bring it up on the podcast as well but yeah when you brought that up at the meeting i just looked at, uh, at terry my wife and i was like that's a great idea because i mean i too came from the home haunt industry and because uh, like i said i knew of haunted houses i went but i never acted in them and then mike newsom he used to be back in the day he was a big home haunter and uh, yeah, he's a family friend and all that, and he needed an actor. So that's how I got introduced to acting at a, at a haunted house. And, you know, so Home Haunt does have a special place with me because that's how I got my start. But um, yeah, you know, and like you said, yeah, on the business aspect of it, you know, there's the home haunters don't do it to get rich or make money. They do it because they're passionate. So, you know, mm-hmm. they have that passion and drive that's even some haunters don't have because, you know, they're looking to make a little bit of money or just to get out and scare people. And uh, so they have unique ideas. They're creative because they don't have the budget and stuff like that. And um, I, I would pretty much bet my my life savings and house and everything that there is a ton of home haunters that, that, that the niche, the home haunting niche is bigger than people realize. And like you yeah. said, it's just that they're, they're quiet and they're in the dark and they're underground, so to speak. But I would, I would bet my bottom dollar that the, the home haunting industry is huge. And when, when you say it like that, it makes it sound like treasure hunting. Mm-hmm. 
like 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 there, there's one thing to look at a map like a scare factor haunt map and then kind of be like okay there's a haunt there there's a haunt there there's a haunt. but isn't it more exciting to kind of like find a haunt that no one knew existed like right. there's something exciting about that it's, it's like a treasure or you know kind of treasure hunting in a way uh it's almost like letterboxing or geocaching i guess to me in a way uh mm-hmm. so if i find somebody like you know if i find a haunt amazing display and i i found one um in springfield two years ago and uh you know and i got them to join the the group and and i check in with them and i'm like hey how's the display going i get to hear how that goes but there's so many more and i've just never had what i thought was a good icebreaker to kind of be like unless i catch them outside like it's different like um there were (laughs) I'm sorry, this is going off track. The the there was a comedian who talked about that people used to have a cake in their house for company. As in somebody would knock on the door and then it's like, we have company. Nowadays it's knock on the door and it's like, who the hell's that? Right. <laughs> what do you want? So you turn know, it on their ring app. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you don't you don't look at it like, oh, it's a visitor. Let's get the cake out anymore. It, 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 I, I feel like the culture's kind of changed in that way, but uh the, the point being going and knocking on someone's door because they have amazing haunt display. I I'm not sure how well that's going to go over. However, a card I think is a much easier icebreaker in my opinion. So I um, I'm interested in seeing what kind of results this yields. And, and so this, this Halloween season, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm going treasure hunting. I'm going to find you home haunters and, and maybe you'll listen to this episode and know that I wanted to find you and connect with you and bring you to be part of a, a bigger community because the haunt industry, I, I love it for the, for the, you know, for many of the reasons that Jim kind of pointed out about how, you know, he's seen me change over the years <laughs> and because there's just so much to get into mm-hmm. really so much. And, and there's so much you can do. Um, and it's, and it's really an industry that you, pretty much get what you put into it but i no, actually i think you get back way more than you put into it you know uh, um it's it's just it's just been nice like ever since the meeting many people many different people have messaged me they want to connect with one person or another they want uh advice on actor training they're looking uh <clears throat> for what oha is doing next the haunters are amazing people um they really are Oh yeah, well, I got my five cards from Ryan, so my head will be on a swivel this season, just like you guys. <laughs> well, and, and the only reason we said five was because we only printed two hundred of them. I mean, right. I don't know if there's, you know, maybe there's two hundred home hunters in Ohio. I mean, maybe there's more. There probably is more, uh, mm-hmm. but we we just kind of thought uh, there's like a hundred people at the group. Maybe, right? Maybe uh, I don't know several of them take a take a stack. We'll just limit it to five, and so I'll be interested in seeing like. Do you need more than five? Do you not? So, you know, Donnie, please keep in touch with me about, you know, how many cards you pass out. Cause yeah, for sure. I, I really, I really want to know, like, you know, it, do, are people going to really drop off the cards? If they do, does it, you know, yield result? Um, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud about my curiosities with this experiment. Mm-hmm. I think what we should do, if we could actually talk to the, the home haunter in person and hand them the card, is uh, yeah. for, uh, for us to like take a selfie and post on the group page. And then that way it lets them know that we've, you know, we met with a home haunter and, and introduced them to the, the group or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the one in Springfield I found that they were outside. So I was able to start talking to them. You know, I, I said how I work at a haunted house and I love haunt displays. Cause this, this house had quite the display. Like it was, it was something interesting. It really was. And, and so it was easy to kind of, uh, talk with them in that way and i know not everybody is that way but you know if you're able to do that and you know take a selfie and all that kind of stuff i i fully encourage it because you know i think that would actually help people to feel more comfortable in doing it like yeah okay people are doing this mm-hmm. um and 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 it's okay to engage with the haunter so i i in, in my personal opinion i think uh the likelihood of catching them outside is the best bet um second best leaving them a card in my mm-hmm. opinion yeah where's the cricket button <laughs> i don't take a minute drink what we'll the take this and splice this part out <laughs> this is the part where donnie's take drink 
<clears throat> yeah, I started to say something and my my throat was dry, so I was like, nothing came out. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <clears throat> oh um, man, we're we're just we're just hoping to be more engaging. Like um, the the other thing you heard at the meeting was that we hope that Haunts will submit an actor for an outstanding performance award. Um, this this to me is is more of a you know just an incentive for your actors like. You know, we, we want to create a tradition in that way where like there's one actor that a haunt can submit for an outstanding performance award. So, you know, basically the way it would work is they would email us. They'd say who it is, send a picture of them and why they deserve the award uh, limit one per haunt. And th that creates some recognition because I, I think actor incentives are so different across the board like every haunt does it differently every haunt seems to pay their actors differently every haunt um does awards differently so we're just trying to hopefully offer something that comes from outside the haunt because i'm one of those i'm one of those egomaniacs whether whether you believe it or not like i i love getting recognized for what i for my acting i just do i'm selfish that way and but i I'm don't believe that. I don't believe I'm the only one. So if actors know that they have a chance to um, earn some recognition, I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good incentive. So uh, that's another experiment. We'll see how that goes. Like we'll put it out there and haunts can submit them and they'll get a laminated certificate and, uh, and uh, we'll make a thing of it like film sort of a um, uh, kind of like an award ceremony uh, type thing, uh, you mm -hmm. know, giving recognition to them. And so, I'm interested in seeing how that goes as well. So uh, many different ways we're trying to engage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the recognition is a big deal. Even at Carnage, it's a big deal. Me and Mike and them, uh, they do this thing every, like after every night during haunt season, they'll, whoever gets the most compliments from a guest or if they do something above and beyond or they get a good scare, you know, they'll pick one person every night and give them a, a free pair of contacts. And uh, so that's like the little incentive for uh, for them to give their all and 110 percent and all this and that. And, you know, people, when they get their name called, you can just see their faces light up. They get all happy and excited. And, you know, so like you said, the recognition, you know, that's a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're 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 not trying to be reviewers. I know reviewers um, oftentimes give review, give um, awards and such, but we're we're trying to be something we're not we're not trying to be reviewers. We're just you right. know trying to be. Uh, a tool that haunts can use to help incentivize their actors. Yeah. Terry calls me a tool a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I had awards for my actors in mall as well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that big wrestling belt. Yeah. Yep. You get your name on the belt. You also get a trophy, but you get your name on the belt mm -hmm. and the trophy's personalized too um and then uh i have a couple of other awards in there and it's uh you know most improved or you know rookie of the year things like that so uh that they appreciated it definitely and a lot of them wanted their name on that belt mm -hmm. yeah but well, no like uh like den schoolhouse has the tater award yeah. um and i have yet to win it uh, so it's actually one of my goals this year is to try and win it. Um, I know that the long, the longness of the season sometimes gets to me or, you know, like the weekends kind of start blending into each other. But uh, this year, I really, I really want to go for it. I really want to win. So, you know, again, I love my recognition. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm aiming for, I'm aiming for the Tater Award this year. Good. That's a great, that's a great goal to aspire to. I mean, that award was first presented back when i worked there <laughs> did you ever win it nope no nope, you neither huh nope. well i think uh i think they've run out of spaces on it so they need to like expand the uh the name plate because there's an uh engraved name of the winner goes onto each right uh on each one but there's out of, they ran out of spaces or they can kind of shift them so um i'm hope i'm hoping to get it um I I've I've always kind of wanted I don't know. I just wanted to be the most entertaining. It, it's called the most entertaining actor um sponsored by Tater Tater Award. Uh so that that's my goal and 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 I hope that people will participate in the Ohio Honor Association uh thing as well. 
um, kind of speaking on the longevity of the season, we're also going to offer a video chat night on Monday nights. Uh, people can come in and uh, kind of share some successes about their season, but they can also vent if they want and they can stay anonymous. You know, they can turn their camera off, change their name on the thingy, whatever. Um, just, just to kind of be a support uh, because we know those of us that have done it, we know that the haunt season can be long. It can be draining. Um, but you know, sometimes people just want to talk about it and share about it. So that that's another, uh, uh, effort that we're making. I'm interested in seeing what the participation will look like there, but those will be Monday nights at eight. So, uh, uh, watch the Ohio honors page and an, an event page will pop up for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of the haunt season, let's uh, talk a little bit about that and cover that. Cause one of the things that I'm envious of you about is every time I turn around, it seems like you're posting a picture of you at a different haunt and going to this haunt and that haunt. And I'm like, dang, man, I don't want to go to those. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you, you pretty much got your finger on the pulse of, of haunting here in Ohio. Um, so what are you seeing out there? What's some, what's some uh, haunts that stepped up their game? What's some haunts that weren't open, you know, because of COVID and that is opening up this year? You know, what kind of stuff are you hearing out there? Well, uh, there's, there's several um, who, the, there were several that were closed down for the haunt season and then they made a return, uh, some of them last year. Uh, for example, Jail of Terror in Newark, Ohio, uh, they're going to be opening up uh, this year. But not only are they opening, they're opening like early, like September 9th. <laughs> nice. Um, like September 9th early. So uh, I know Darren Smith was involved with, uh, with that haunt for a very long time. And I think that now he has the opportunity to bring it back um, along with other new partners. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see what they're, what they have going on. It's not going to look like what it used to. I think it, it's, it's whole new everything. So I'm very excited to see what jail of terror has going on. Um, fear field out in St. Clairsville, Ohio is going to be open September 3rd. They're, they're the earliest I'm aware of. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, they, I, I haven't been there in like two years, so I'm not totally sure. Um, haunted hoorah in marion ohio just came back i think last year for the oh. first time and now they're going to be in their second year in their new location and and you know they're they're one of those stories that i think yeah at the time it sucked like uh dealing with the eminent domain thing with the school and having to lose their location in ashley ohio but talking to the owners recently they're pretty happy with this new location and i think that there's a lot they can do with it and they're very excited. I think last year they 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 had a relatively short season, but this year it's going to be a much longer season, uh, opening up the September sixteenth. So and running all the way through November fifth. So it's a season about the same length as what we're doing at Dent Schoolhouse. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm excited for them. There's so I mean there, there's there's several out there who uh, who are uh, popping up. Oh I and I should say all how all hallows eve terror town uh down in williamsburg which is just east of cincinnati they're going to be i think the first ones to open september 2nd um they 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 have i think the longest season out of anybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a two and a half two months two and a half month season there almost <laughs> yeah so i mean it, it's it's just you know going and looking i mean i'm looking at my list right now and there's tons of haunts that are going to be opening september 16th the 23rd of september um, and the September 30th, a vast majority of the haunts are opening September 30th and running those five weekends because October 1st is that Saturday. So the vast majority are doing those five weekends. Uh, but there are, there are several op early openers like terror town feel, uh, fear field, mm -hmm. jail of terror, fear Columbus will be open early too. dark view out in Toronto, Ohio will be open September 10th. Um, I have not had a chance to look at the Cleveland area quite yet. And Cleveland is still my, um, is still kind of my personal dead spot. I think uh, yeah. as far as uh, knowing, knowing much about the haunts, I know several people in the area. I just don't know tons about each and in, each individual haunt. So, uh, but I mean, there's, there's tons of stuff going on. We had dent, we have some, um, some fun stuff uh, I think planned as well. Um uh, Jim would remember the, uh, uh, the Queen City Slaughter Yard uh, that's current, that is now no more. 
So you'll have to come visit and see what we got going on back there because it's going to be actually, I think, really, really neat. Um, I'm just uh, kind of browsing through my list here. Um, I've been hearing some buzz about Distracted Haunted House up in Bowling Green, Ohio. Um, the, that area, you know, Haunted Hydro, I think, has always kind of been like the one that people know about up in the Northwest. Uh-huh. Uh, so distracted in Bowling Green, I think, uh, is is starting to come into its own. Um, I just recently learned about it not too long ago, and right, I was going to say I've never heard of that one to be honest. Well, it's uh, it's kind of there, smack dab in the middle of uh, Bowling Green, basically, and um, you know, it, it's a it's a it's a Bowling Green is pretty much a a, a big college town, right? Uh, like like as in the college, I think is the main economy in that town. And, and mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, you have a lot of great college students there for either actors or customers. So, um, you know, hopefully that works out really well for them. And I, I that's one I really want to check out for sure. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so uh, Blood Prison, I think is going to have a pretty awesome scene. I mean, uh, Blood Prison that, uh, you know, you know about uh, Andrea, the uh, warden's widow. That character um, has just blown up. She's known for her scream uh-huh. and she's, she's so popular on TikTok now too. So, you know, she's been able to raise a lot of buzz for blood prison. I mean, not that it was necessarily needed because blood prison is just amazing as it is. Right. Uh, but uh, there, there's definitely a lot happening there for them. And so, yeah. Uh, and there's a new haunt up in Cleveland, uh, nightmare Cleveland. So um, I'm excited to learn more about that. I think a lot of the folk that was involved with the Chippewa Lake Slaughter House also um, are involved mm-hmm. with uh, making Nightmare Cleveland. I want to check that out. I want to check out Chippewa Lake too. I've, I've not been able to see that one. And Nightmare, mm-hmm. um, I know that uh, Dembski has had a lot involved with Nightmare Cleveland. So if Dembski's involved, the sets are going to look amazing. So tons of stuff happening in Ohio and it's all going to be, I'm sure it's going to be awesome and I'm really looking forward to a great season because, and there's some haunts that uh, have popped up on the list that um, I, I like, there's a hunt, a haunted haunted house. Like, have you ever used speak to text and said the word haunted and it came up as hunted? You know, so <laughs> it's almost, like that's happened all the time. So when I saw that, I was like, was that a speak to text issue or, or did they actually decided to call the hunt? hunted haunted house um i i saw it on the list i'm trying to find an opening day for it but um nobody there's no facebook page and nobody on the websites responded and that happens sometimes we're tr- i'm trying to put together all the opening dates all the end dates and i'm trying to put out a graphic kind of break ohio into four parts because if i try to do it all in one it's too big just way too big right. uh, so i'm breaking ohio into four parts we're going to have a graphic uh, put up like Cincinnati, Southern Ohio, Dayton and Toledo, Columbus and East Ohio, and then the Northeast. Um, because that's just kind of how the concentration of haunts work out. And we hope to post that and we hope people will share it because in the years past, I was making videos about what haunts were opening. And I don't right. think they got shared out as much as I would have liked. So I think this year, a graphic that just has all the haunts listed in their opening dates. I think that's way more shareable. And I think that will hopefully get the Ohio haunts much more attention. Sure. Yeah. Every little bit helps for sure. Yeah. That Chippewa, Chippewa Lake uh, slaughterhouse. I went there with uh, some of the carnage people a year or two ago and uh, got to visit that because that's my comma slasher guy. So that was kind of like my kind of like in my wheelhouse, that kind of a haunt. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. So you, I, I have to make a point here now. Okay. We're going to back up a little bit because I believe it was Jail of Terror. Mm-hmm. What was the opening date of that one again? September 9th. Right. September 9th, Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to rub it in, are you? That's what I'm going to be, Donnie. <laughs> Not a Jail of Terror. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's not going to be there? Yeah, me. (laughs) (laughs) Got to rub it in. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to. (laughs) Especially when I'm there and I send you Facebook posts. Right. Well, that's all right. My sacrifice is going to benefit us both. So just keep that in mind. (laughs) 
hope so. <laughs> right. Donnie's missing out on adventures. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. The fun, the one of the fun things about doing this list also is is finding the haunts I didn't know about. Right. Uh, that that's still that's part of that treasure hunting um, and finding out like oh there's this haunt that exists now. I'm going to contact them, say, Hey, you know, share whatever, share stuff about your hunt on the Ohio Haunters page. And so, um, I'm excited for that. And I just got my letter, um, offering my position at the Dent schoolhouse. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, we do have to re-audition every year. So I, I got, I got my letter for that. So I'm excited. <laughs> Pumpkin smashers alive this year, huh? He'll be alive. I don't know what he's going to be doing. Um, he, they've kind of indicated that he might he might kind of uh, be rotated a bit more so he may be outside he may be inside uh it's it's always kind of hard to tell because you also base it sometimes on how many actors do you get in because i know haunts are not all of them but several haunts are having problems still finding actors uh, and that continues to be an issue. And I know now I've brought that up before. So recruitment is still uh, something that has to be uh, kind of focused on and uh, figured out. But they are uh, so, you know, we'll see how many we have and to be sure we have enough. And if if not, then, you know, I so I'll I'll be Max will be somewhere in the house. <laughs> somewhere, huh? Well, somewhere, I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing. I, I, I love being a cue line actor. I really do, but I, I do need to put my pride aside. And if the haunt needs me to fill a scene, you know, I got to be willing to do that. And, and that's, and that's being part of the team. And that's, and that's being, you know, trying to, trying to do what's necessary to put on a great show, because I mean, we don't need all these people running around outside. I mean, they, they do help, they do entertain and everything, but you know, the reviews will talk about empty scenes, you know, the Google reviews, the Facebook reviews, they will say, well, there was a bunch of empty scenes, Well, we don't want that. We, I think, I, I think about it. I don't know any scene that doesn't have an actor. Well, right. I, there, there, there's kind of a little hallway, I guess, but uh, for a, the most, sorry. No, I was just saying there, there's a very easy way to get through that. Mm -hmm. Um because I started, well, I, I worked in the, uh, I worked in detention hall. Well, mm -hmm. I'd say before that, I, I worked, when I was working at Kings Island, I was doing scenes. Um, you know, that's where, that's how I cut my teeth. And then when I went outside, when I was at Dent, I found that I really liked that freedom, but I was always a team player. And if I needed to work a scene, I would work a scene. I never once, not once actually worked in the house. Really? Really? Huh? I have never worked a scene in the house. See, I used to be really jealous of the house when I worked. Uh, so after detention, all was Queen City Slaughter Yard, right? My yeah, first yeah. year I was out there. I was jealous of the house because they got dismissed first. And actually from the slaughter yard, you could see upstairs where they were putting their costumes away and we were still out there. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, this is after a night where you're tired, you know what I mean? And, and everything. I mean, I still had fun, but uh, I didn't know that about you, John. I didn't know you were, you never actually worked inside. Not once. That's interesting. I couldn't even tell you how to get around half of the place. Wait, you were never like rained out. Like outside, um, they put us. Usually, they sent us home. Huh. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember that where it, when we got rained out, uh, there would be a certain number of spots still available in the house. So you know, if somebody wanted them, they would like volunteer to do it. Um, and then years after they built, they, they kept updating the slar yard in such a way that, uh, the actors would have shelter, um, uh, in the rain. So, you know, they were able to modify that. Um, and now it's gone. So maybe, you know, those of you that have known the queen series slar yard, 
stop by and see what has replaced the Queen City Slar Yard. It's totally new, totally different, and it's going to be awesome. Interesting. That's totally oh, yes. It's got my curiosity peaked. <laughs> oh, yes. It, I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's really pretty. It, 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 it looks good. And it's not even done. So, you know, we're, we're in that crunch time at this point, Yindi, you know, a lot of haunts, um, I mean, dense opening in less than 30 days at this point. So, you know, it's crunch time. We got to, got to get it done. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to get yelled at for not being there tonight. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. I like talking with you all. So Hi. lots of, lots of fun stuff to look forward to um, uh, for the haunt season. But um, speaking of the haunt season, if I'm allowed to plug this real quick, um dent schoolhouse we're going to be doing a haunter night on september 29th which is the last thursday in september um most haunts are not open on a thursday and the last thursday in september so we invite haunts to come out if you're wearing your haunt swag so a shirt hat jacket whatever you got from your haunt wear your haunt swag and uh you get a discounted ticket to uh, go through the haunt and i'm going to be playing host that night uh me not any other character, but uh, so I get to see everybody kind of, uh, you know, point things out to you, like, uh, you know, and then we'll be giving away some prizes and uh, you also get to see what's new behind the house and uh, kind of get experience with that and uh, bigger explanation. Because I mean, the point of this is that when haunters show up on other nights, sometimes we're just really, really, really busy. So we're trying to designate a night that we know we can give the attention to our fellow haunters that come visit. Uh, because when haunters visit, it's awesome. I love when haunters visit. It's like, you know, those are the people that know uh, what it's like to put on a production like this. And so we're, I'm ex and, and I love showing off dead. I just love showing it off. And so this is like the one time I get to actually be like, this is my haunt home and, <laughs> you know, show it off. Um, and I'm going to get to do that also because we're going to be uh, we are offering more uh, behind the scenes tours so people can buy a time slot before we open for the night and I'll lead them through the house and uh, show them all the behind the scenes stuff, the stuff that normal customers don't get to see. You get the real in-depth look into everything at Dent. And so that'll be I get to host that as well. So that that's uh, I got I have a lot of fun stuff happening for me at Dent this year, and I'm very excited for it. And the season itself, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see how how it goes and uh, grow the character uh, and and keep keep building and, you know, just keep having more fun. I don't know how many more years I've got doing this, but, you know, <laughs> still fun. <laughs> I think you got a few left in you at least. I still <laughs> <laughs> well that 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 travel bug is 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 in my ear it's buzzing in my ear and and donnie says you know like he sees me at haunts um you know every so often yeah I, i'm kind of at the mercy of haunts that either choose to open before us or do a, an off-season event that's that's all i can see and so i do try to see them but you know the uh, so for example I'm, I'm looking at this list of haunts i'm like haven't been, haven't been, haven't been, haven't been, because it's a Friday, Saturday haunt that operates all Friday and Saturdays of October. I'm never going to see them. Right. Um, right. And these are also the haunts that are not opening for Christmas, Valentine's Day or anything like that. I'm never going to see them. I'm, um, there, I do have opportunities to uh, do a little bit of video features with the Haunted Attractions Network, so I may get to see them, but I won't get to see the full show. And that's just so the point I'm getting at is there's going to be a time where I want to see the show, like all the shows, as much as I can. I, I have no aspirations of being a reviewer. I, I don't. I, my opinion really doesn't matter that much. This is more out of personal curiosity. I want to see. I want to, I just like, I, I want to represent Ohio well. And I feel like one of the ways that I can do that is to know every, all the haunts in Ohio, not just know them on a list, but like know them, like know their, oh, this is going to sound weird, but like know their heart. Like, mm -hmm. like what, what, what makes each haunt different? Because it, like each one does, like uh, like even the JC's haunt in Hudson. I I went up there. I you know it's 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 a haunt that benefits the Junior Chamber of Commerce. I don't know what I'm gonna find, but man, it just the way they do everything was so interestingly thought out and done. And 
and and so not just learning about the haunt but the story behind the haunt there's 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 a richness to that i um have you, have you guys ever watched saving mr banks uh-uh. I haven't. no but i know what it's about okay so it's about the making of the mary poppins film Saving Mr. Banks is a very interesting movie to me because I love learning about the story behind the story or the story of how the movie came to be. And so it's the same way with haunted houses. I love learning about how did this haunt come to be? What's the story behind it and what makes it unique? And so, um, yes, I probably have several years of, of acting still in me, but I, I, I'm very, very curious about this industry in Ohio, not just Ohio, the country, but I, I don't really have aspirations to do like, for example, what the haunt finder general does. You know, I, I don't, I don't really want to do that, but I do, I do want to see more. And I feel like that would only help my perspective on things. So you just want to go to go, not for any other reason that other tend to experience it. Yeah. I just want to go like, uh, yeah, because when, when people say, Hey, what are, what, what are, what are these great haunts in Cleveland? Well, I'm like, I know of haunts in Cleveland. Like I know the Hudson haunted house. Uh, I've recently gone to factory tear and Akron schoolhouse and, um, 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 for no. Oh crap. What was it called? Forest of screams. Okay. Yeah. In Medina, I think it is. Yes. Yes. Forest of screams. So I've been, I've been to a few, but not a ton of them. And so I just want to go and see them so that when people like people, I really hope this doesn't sound braggy. People are asking me constantly about haunted houses. Like what are some haunts to visit in this area? What are some haunts to visit in this area? So I've kind of just taken this attitude of like, well, here they are. Here's the haunts. And then they'll say, well, what are the good ones? Go experience all of them. And you figure it out. You know, because what you may like, they may not and vice versa. Right. Exactly. My mother can go through the dense schoolhouse and she will be fine. But you take her to a charity haunts wooded trail. She freaks out. She cannot handle wooded trails. You know, so so it's subjective. What is good? What is not? Um, And and really, it kind of comes up to, I think, you know, the audience member there. There's tons of movies out there that some people just love to death, but get terrible reviews on on uh, by professional critics. So it's like, what is good? Uh, I think it's I think it's in the eye of whoever's willing to spend money to see it, I guess. Um, So. I just want to, I just want to see them. I don't want to review or anything like that. I, I, I want to, I want to visit them, find out what the heart behind them is. And so that when people ask me, <clears throat> I can say something about them because uh-huh. they're, you know, the, the, these are, <clears throat> excuse me, these are artistic expressions, these haunts, you know, the layouts, the stories they're trying to tell the, the characters they're trying to create the, the, this whole creepy world that they're making inside of whether it's an old building a strip mall whatever or or this patch of woods they're they're trying to tell a story and create a new world and i want to explore those all of them if i could but i'll (laughs) settle i'll settle for ohio i think ohio is possible within the next few years right it's a good starting point yeah, you know we do have the most haunts in the country. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're not as like we're not as a big a state as like California. So you know the traveling isn't as bad. You know the the density right. really good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there's there's a there's a lot there for sure. Oh yeah. Well, normally this would be the part where we'd uh, ask you the question, but you've already answered it. Yeah, he's already answered it probably three times, four times. <laughs> I, I remember answering it once. Oh, okay. Well, maybe remember, the first couple we didn't do it yet. Yeah, I, I think I, I don't know when that when that became a tradition. Um, but I do remember last time saying that I would drown someone. <laughs> mm-hmm, there you go. So, so do do I need to pick uh, my second go to? <laughs> uh, <laughs> out of it it's, it's got to be your go-to my yeah. go-to yeah we'll stick with the one your original <laughs> well I, I do have this amazing bloodied up 
I think right. it's a splitter. Is this a splitter? It's probably a skull splitter. Yeah, <laughs> skull splitter. Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've answered the question a few times. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but you know, I, 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 what's, what's been the most interesting one? Uh, there's, yeah, there's been a lot. The one I, the one I pick all the time. It's just because it struck me so funny. Was uh, some and it was a wrestler that said said this one, but they said they would be on a high rise building and be on the roof. They would throw the person off the top of the roof, and <laughs> before the person would hit the ground, they would run down, get in a truck, and hit them right before they hit the ground, run them over. <laughs> mm. I was like, yeah, man, you would yeah, have yeah, to yeah. be super fast to pull that yeah. off. <laughs> I remember you mentioning that one. I think uh, that that one sounds like a pretty awesome Mortal Kombat fatality. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 could be really well animated. I think I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it just like so when they said it, it struck me funny. I was just like, man, he must be pretty quick. <laughs> <It's> like... mm, right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's and uh, one other one other thing I wanted to mention real quick was um, I am part of a group now. I've continued to do things. This is part of not being able to say no, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've I've joined a group called the uh, Global Scare Network, uh, which is um, it's a it's a group of people that was founded by David Jones, who is out of Portland, and he brought these haunters together from Scotland and Australia, and we've been talking. And then during the year of COVID, we did some remote uh, panels, and after that year, we decided to kind of come together, call ourselves the Global Scare Network, and we. We're, we're aiming to do uh, education, consultation, and stuff for uh, haunt attractions and set design, storytelling, prop creation, character development. Basically, looking at many different topics of haunting, but from an international perspective. And, you know, speaking with the haunters from Scotland and Australia has been a lot of fun for me to just kind of like, they love hearing what I do, but I love hearing what they do. Uh, so, it's a really awesome group of people. So, um, you know, if, if you're interested at all, you know, find the global scare network on Facebook, they're really awesome people. And, um, I'm kind of hoping that these two will talk to a couple of them at some point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Cause they're, they're, they are great folks to talk to. Well, let's see. Um, Sunday. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but wrestle horror. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, do they is the uh, is their styles? Have you noticed if their styles of haunting and and stuff like that differ from ours, or is it kind of all just one uniform? Well, what it seems like is that uh, theme parks exist in Europe and Australia, and, and this is not just the Scottish and the Australian folk. This seems to be in Germany too. That the that a lot of known haunts are attached to theme parks in a way like so when you when you uh when you watch like uh japanese dramas not like any of you would but if you have you've noticed that when they go to theme parks there's usually a haunted house attraction as part of the theme park um and that seems that seems to be the case with a lot of these uh a lot of these places that they the haunt doesn't uh, this is just what I'm seeing. I'm not, I'm not totally sure if this is the broad generalization, but what I've noticed is a lot of haunts are attached to a theme park. So Paul Lanner of Haunters Against Hate, he is going to Germany, but he's going to a park because that's where a haunt is at. And, and it's a haunt attached to his park. So there's a lot of haunts attached to parks. It is the case here in the United States too. You know, Kings Island, Cedar Point, they all have haunts, uh, Universal, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff but there's tons of other haunts too in the united states right, right. Uh, stand to offset, haunts. right yeah to offset those numbers so um the uh, the industry is not as big but they they the, that is one thing that kind of i'm noticing um you know they they get the space they get the space for such for so much amount of time and they only have it for so long um and so then they have to get in and get out you know, and, and so that's to me, you know, at Denton, we're 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 tearing stuff down as soon as the Christmas show is done, you know, and, and we're spending the rest of the time building. So it's it's amazing to me to think of these folks trying to build a scene or build a haunt 
elsewhere. And then as soon as they say go, bring that haunt and set it up in the space they're given. And then to deconstruct and take it down. Um, one other thing that seems to be interesting is that the Australian haunters, um, it's more like spring for them during haunt season, right? So, oh, nice. so the fall aesthetic doesn't quite match, except for what happens in pop culture and movies and such. But it's springtime for them. So it, it, uh, talking with the owners, it seems like Halloween is kind of not the foremost like spirit of them doing the haunting it's it's something else uh for them it's just you know for the sake of being spooky in a way so it, it like i said it's just really interesting to speak with them and talk with them about that so uh I, I encourage you to you know check them out talk with them uh they're 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 great folk we definitely would love to have them on the show sometime for sure yeah for sure as long as you can pull the magic like you did for sunday <laughs> I'm trying, you know, uh, four folk, uh, four different, four different time zones. There is <laughs> <It's, it's> difficult. <laughs> right. Wanna, we're going to be doing that meeting. Uh, uh, somebody's going to be talking at midnight. The rest of us are in pretty good shape, but the one is at midnight, and, which isn't the worst, but you know, it's still, it's going to be a fun conversation and, you know, talking with you, Jim, whether it's here or, or big scary, you know, is, is always a lot of fun and, and Donnie, you know, you're you're fantastic so i don't I, i'm i'm sure i've said thank you to the both of you before but you're you're both are just amazing oh thanks appreciate it we feel the same about you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so make sure you let everybody know how to find out about the ohio hunters association so we only exist on facebook at this point um so find the facebook group Ohio Haunters Association. Uh, if you are a haunter, a home haunter, or if you have a haunt related business, submit a post. Um, I did have to turn on post approval because uh, there was a lot of spam, a lot of nonsense being put out there. So, you know, forgive me, but uh, just submit your post and, you know, we'd love for you to share what you got going on. Uh, find more about that and, uh, you know, find. Uh, we did just change the website, by the way. Uh, Dentschoolhouse.com is, uh, is the website now. So for Dent Schoolhouse season, and if you want to buy behind the scenes tour tickets where I get to lead you through the haunt, check that out. And if you just want to find me on Facebook, Maximus Christian Bryant, send me a friend request, but send me a message because I get a lot of like spamish friend requests. So send me a message to say, you know, how you know me, your fellow haunter, whatever. Um, and global scare network is all has a page on Facebook as well. So check it all out, see wherever I am. And, um, hopefully we can connect. Sounds good. That's awesome. Well, I certainly want to thank you for coming on to talk to us for a fourth time you're i guess you're kind of a popular guy <laughs> um and i gotta say you wear many 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 hats and my hat is off to you for that thank you i appreciate it. it's it's yeah gotta i i'm i'm currently trying to balance it so uh, <laughs> right now, right now it's looking okay. I'm, I'm just hoping to be a great actor this season and a great leader for Ohio Honor Association. And so thank you so much for, you know, that encouragement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. My name is Meat Hook Jim, along with my co-host Donnie Hoover, our special guest, OHA President Maximus Christian Bryant. This is the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Thanks for watching and listening. Yep. See you guys. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets, facebook.com backslash wrestle horror, Instagram at wrestle horror, Twitter at wrestle horror on YouTube, at the wrestle horror channel. And you can also find us on our website, www.wrestlehorror.com.